Imagine when you sat down for breakfast this morning, you only ate the right half of your plate. Not because you're on a diet, not because you're a picky eater, but because your brain was unaware of the left half. This is a condition that we're here to address today, and it affects 50% of stroke survivors. I'm Leah, I, I'm Casey, this is Leah and Sean, <laughs> and we are thrilled to introduce to you GoPat, an innovative new technology for stroke rehabilitation. This is our agenda, so before we go into what GoPat is and what makes it so special, we are going to, I'm going to give you some background information. The condition I was talking about earlier is hemispatial neglect. Hemispatial neglect is a product of a stroke and it's characterized by an inability to respond to stimulus in the left visual field. A typical task for a patient with hemispatial neglect is this drawing task as you see on the screen. Patients with hemispatial neglect will be asked to copy over a drawing such as a clock or a flower and they'll only be able to copy over the right half. Not because they have a vision problem but simply because they are unable to respond to the stimulus in the left visual field, they, they just neglect, completely neglect the left half. Currently, hemispatial neglect is being treated with prism adaptation therapy. The way prism adaptation therapy, or PAT, works is that patients are given prism goggles that shift their visual field 12 degrees to the right. Then they're asked to repeatedly point at a target in front of them over and over again, usually a dot on a piece of paper. And after the session is over, they take off the glasses and they exhibit an after effect. So when the glasses are on, they initially miss the target because of the visual field shift. And then with repeated motions, they're able to find that target again um, and reach it over and over again. However, when the glasses are taken off, they're able to reach farther left than they were able to originally. And thus, that is the therapy. However, the way that PAT is currently being administered has a problem, and that problem is threefold. The first aspect of the problem is that it's limited to an inpatient setting. Currently, an occupational therapist needs to be present at all times, as well as give the materials to the patient in order for the therapy to be administered. Despite what has been shown about the importance of repetition for patients with hemispatial neglect to show improvement, there's no way for patients to take this therapy home with them do it repeatedly, and do it on their own time at their own convenience. The second aspect of the problem is that it lacks engagement. It's extremely mundane for a patient to reach over and over again at a point in front of them, and it has been shown that increased engagement improves therapeutic effect, yet currently there's no alternative. Lastly, there is no data collection. There is such room for improvement in this sphere. If a patient was able to track their data points, their misses and their correct reaches, and track that over time, that's valuable information for research institutions, for doctors, for caregivers, as well as appreciated by family members and friends. So I just gave you an overview of the problem with PAT, and now Leah will tell you about our solution. Thanks, Casey. So our solution is a digitized game suite that allows the patient to bring prism adaptation therapy into their home. First, this, this solution targets the problem that Casey laid out in three ways. First, it is self-administrable, so the patient will be able to perform prism adaptation therapy at home without the need for an OT present. This will allow them to be able to repeatedly perform this intensive therapy and receive the effects longer term. Next, this will increase engagement. As Casey mentioned before, the task of pointing over and over at a paper board is incredibly mundane. With addictive games, um, with different levels of challenging, different challenge levels, as well as fit for different uh, skill levels, we hope to increase engagement, which will, which will then increase therapeutic effect. Finally, the data aspect of our solution will allow patients to share their data with not only their family members, doctors, and therapists, but also um, research institutions who can then improve the therapy itself. Now that I've described our solution to you, I'll hand it over to Sean to describe the market. All right, thanks, Leah. Okay, um, so every year, about 800,000 patients in the United States experience stroke. And of those, roughly half of those patients experience hemispatial neglect. Um, for these hemispatial neglect patients, their median inpatient stay is just 16 days, which is often insufficient time for adequate therapy. 
One study found that 33% of uh, hemispatial neglect patients that need uh, therapy do not actually receive it, which, mean, which means that there's a significant uh, chunk of the stroke patient population that needs additional therapy that they could potentially do at home. And this is the gap that our solution is attempting to address. Um, oh, I also want to mention that for the market valuation, um, the digital therapeutics market is planning, is expected to grow to $9.3 billion by 2025. So, so far we have identified design requirements. We have developed a prototype, which some of you may have seen earlier on the show floor. Uh, we are planning on testing the products with, at the local institution, the Rehab uh, Institute of St. Louis, getting feedback from both patients and providers. We want to continue iterating on the prototype, uh, including uh, with feedback from external organizations beyond St. Louis, and finally release the product in 2019 on both Android and iOS. Um, so our business uh, model is to uh, target, the, target the patients directly. Um, under this model, there will be an initial, small initial payment fee for the prism goggles themselves and a recurring subscription monthly fee for uh, continued updates uh, to the application. Um, in the future, we also intend to plan, uh, intend to reach out to insurance companies um, for our business model. Here are our rough projected financials. Um, we hope to gain users exponentially and turn a profit by year three. So this is our team. I'm Casey, not Leah. Um, I'm the team lead. I have a background in computational biology as well as some experience in managing medical apps. This is Leah. She is training to be an occupational therapist. She is well connected over at the Rehab Institute of St. Louis. Essie Revivo, who couldn't be here today, is one of our game developers and she also has a lot of experience in business management. This is Sean Yu, who is another one of our game developers and also has narrowed expertise in developing medical apps. And our advisor is Dr. Alexander Carter, who is a pioneer in this field of delivering prism adaptation therapy to patients. He's extremely well respected among his colleagues and he has given us overwhelming support. In addition to this, these team members, we have consulted with numerous professors in business, medicine, and occupational therapy, and we have received great appreciation by all of them. So what gives GoPad our competitive advantage? We will be the first to market, and we are affiliated with a leading prism adaptation therapy institution for PAT delivery and research. Okay, uh, so far there are no other companies offering digitized prism adaptation therapy, um, but there are other companies offering uh, digitized therapy for stroke patients. So our exit strategy would be to become acquired uh, or merge with one of these organizations. In summary, we have identified a gap, a need for patients to take this therapy home with them, continue undergoing PAT in an engaging way. Thus, we have developed gamification of prism adaptation therapy, or GOPAT. With GOPAT, those with hemispatial neglect can wake up in the morning and eat their entire plate of breakfast. Thank you.